Hey Taylor Army, welcome back to another vlog for all things Taylor. It is going to be part three. I'm so used to doing peace signs that I was almost like part three, like a bonehead. Part three of my wrestling experience. Too much hair dye, I guess. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> there is so much I want to talk about that I have to try to like censor myself in the sense that I'm like, okay, I need to keep this in sort of like a, a conceivable chronological order so fans don't get lost, but also so you can kind of enjoy some of the humor at my expense and also kind of follow along and kind of just really get a feel for, you know, who Taylor Hendricks really is and, you know, how I came to be her and just have a more of an understanding of what it's like actually behind the scenes and just so you have a better sense of, you know, just life in general because I feel... <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, I cough a lot. Um, so I'll drop a little bomb on all of you uh, just for the sake of honesty and being transparent. And I believe, like I've said in the other videos, uh, if you have nothing to hide, why not live life unfiltered, right? <laughs> Love this, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm at home. Uh, this is a little glimpse of Taylor's tiny house on wheels with my hubby, Corey, uh, and my awesome rescue pets. Rescue pets rock, by the way, guys. I know I said that the other day, but I'm saying it again. Sabrina Spellman, one of my kitties. Salem Saberhagen, one of my other kitties. And Slinky the Weenie, who has his own Instagram. <laughs> Full house. <clears throat> but I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> so, um, I cough a lot and I never really talked about this a lot on social media and it's definitely affected my career over the last, um, <clears throat> couple years. And, uh, people have made fun of like my weight and how I look and how I move in the ring. Cause I'm not as fast doing like 27 different super kicks and no selling people's finishers and stuff. Um, <laughs> but nobody ever stopped to like ask like, hey, like, what's up? Are you okay? Or whatever. And that's fine because, you know, people get so wrapped up in their own drama, their own heads, or they just don't care. Um, in 2015, I was actually diagnosed with restrictive lung disease. Um, it was like two or three weeks before my WWE tryout. So that was like a real like, like mind F, you know what I mean? Like you get really like skull F <laughs> because you're like, what? what? What does this mean? And why? And why now? And how long has it been going on? And why? And you just go, why, 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 why me? I'm going to WWE. Why? <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> uh, basically when I was a kid, I was diagnosed with, um, like a moderate scoliosis. Um, and I think over the years of wrestling, you know, that just really didn't help. And I probably, you know, have a very severe curvature of my spine. And so <laughs> basically over the years, my spine is curving more and more and more. And it kind of makes like a S or a question mark, something like that. So it's like, it's like doing its own thing. Like one part of my spine wants to party over here. Another part wants to party over there. They don't want to meet in the middle. Rolling with the homies. <laughs> So, shout out to Clueless. Love that movie. <laughs> I'm so nerdy. Um, anyways, <clears throat> and yes, I do say that out. I'm very well aware. Um, so the curvature of my spine is basically compressing my lung. So one half of my, my one whole side of my lung cannot um, expand to its full potential. Um, and then on top of that, my airway is compromised because of my tonsils. They touch each other. And... Um, so, and then, uh, that causes asthma and acid reflux and all kinds of other health problems that affect your heart, your brain, just your overall general health and well-being. <laughs> and this is all stuff I actually found out like within like two to three weeks of going to the WWE. So it's like the worst possible timing. And then they're like, here's an inhaler. Oh, you, you failed your pulmonary function test, which I didn't even know what that was um, at the time. And it's like, you're breathing into this tube and it measures like how hard you can breathe and stuff. And I totally failed that. <laughs> and then they gave me like a nebulizer and all this other stuff. But then I felt amazing, right? For like the first time in years, because you have to remember I was suffering and like, didn't even know why I was suffering. And I didn't even know. I just thought, you know, oh, I have bad genetics or something, right? Like I just didn't know. <laughs> and, um, so I felt great after this like medicated breathing treatment, this inhaler and all these other meds that they were just plugging me, plugging me, plugging me with. Right. 
And then they gave me this like antibiotic thing because they said, oh, it's really dangerous for you. You know, we really want you to do well at this tryout. We want you to get, you know, the job of your dreams. And we're really concerned because if you get an infection, which looks like you might be getting, um, it could literally close up your airway and you could go into respiratory arrest, which basically means you just stop breathing. And that already happened to me almost once when I was um, 2008. <laughs> and I had to stop wrestling for a couple months because, you know, your spleen gets enlarged and it could like explode and it's like this big whole thing. <clears throat> That's a different story. <clears throat> so basically I was trying to be a pro athlete on like 50% or less airway. And that makes it very difficult to, you know, even just laugh in conversation. If someone like makes you laugh super hard and you're like, <laughs> like even just that, I'm like, <sighs> <laughs> and I start coughing. So I have to cough a lot because it's like I don't get enough air in, you know, and um, I was hitting the nose uh, apparently at some point in my career. And instead of it breaking my nose, it actually like deviated the septum like deep on the inside. And then also I'm allergic to my dog. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, I'm not getting rid of my dog. I love him. Like he's like he keeps me, you know, sane and alive and just living. <laughs> so I was like, you know, that's my ESA. That's, that's my heart. I can't get rid of him. So I have to take allergy meds every single day. Like I cannot miss. <laughs> and, um, so on top of like all of these things, I was trying to be an athlete and it makes it very hard sometimes like going up the stairs, having a great laugh with my fiance or, you know, just like uh, going for a walk with my dog or, you know, going shopping with my mom. You know, it was like a, a drastic, you know, lifestyle changer. <laughs> you know, things that were so easy to me, like, uh, squatting almost 300 pounds, forget about it. Um, you know, I've always been a lot stronger than I look. That's why my, my finisher is a tombstone because I've not hurt a single person. I love that finisher. And like some people like won't even take it, which is really funny to me. Cause I'm like, Oh, you will take that, you know, spinning tornado DDT off the top rope onto the outside of the you know, on the apron, which is like the arguably the hardest part of the entire ring. And you could literally almost kill yourself, but you won't take my perfectly safe tombstone pile driver. Okay. <laughs> That's another story in and of itself. <clears throat> So yes, if anybody gets annoyed by my cough, sorry, not sorry. I'm living my best life doing me, being an athlete with restrictive lung disease and all this other stuff, you know, and it's not anything I've really talked about before, but I'm going to start talking about it a lot because I know that <laughs> people finding out what works for me and what doesn't might be able to help them because, you know, it's not something that a lot of people are very educated about. I knew I wasn't, and I found out about it literally at one of the worst possible times. I had literally almost passed out. Like, I hit my head on, um, I was doing a bench press at the gym, <clears throat> which I was trying to work on because I had a shoulder injury, and I was trying to really strengthen and work on my, 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 ch my upper chest area and my shoulders and everything and just work on that motion because it was really hard. My shoulder was popping out of the sockets. So that's one of the things I was working on before going to WWE. <clears throat> and, uh... I remember I was starting to feel very odd. I can't really explain what it was, but I was starting to get like a panic attack because something was wrong and I didn't know what it was and I was alone at the gym. And so I, I set it back on the, you know, on the thing or whatever. And I get up and I'm starting to walk away and I just start to pass out. Like I just like my, my eyes are open, but I was just blank. I was just out of breath. I couldn't breathe. And like I hit my head on a, <laughs> one of the the dumbbells that was uh, by me on the ground. And so I had to go home and then I go to the doctor and I have to get all these tests done. And it's like, hey, you have restrictive lung disease. <laughs> and back to the antibiotics. So they gave me this antibiotic because they said if I got this infection and then I tried to go to WWE and do that three day tryout, they were like, you can literally go into respiratory arrest. Like, no, this is not good. <clears throat> and the antibiotics that they gave me messed me up so bad that it brought back all of the symptoms that I had had before they gave me those treatments. And I was like, what? And even to this day, it's been almost four whole years. Um, come June, it'll be four years since I was at my WWE trial. And I still have not felt as amazing as I did after they gave me those treatments. So it kind of just goes to show you like <clears throat> sometimes doctors can be spot on and other times they are so harmful. Like it was like a literally and figuratively a, a breath of fresh air. And then all of a sudden it was like taken from me. 
<laughs> and then I had to go and do this tryout, like, you know, <laughs> doing all these drills and things. Um, but I was so proud of that experience. And I know that we're, um, I'm talking a lot about this, but we're going to backtrack and then work our way up to this again. But I felt like it was just really important because I know a lot of people are always like, oh, why do you look the way you do? Or why are you always coughing? Why are you this? You're that. And I like some people will even make jokes like, oh, Taylor eating all that road food. And it just makes me laugh because like, I drink like green smoothies. Half of my diet is uh, vegan, half is not. And I, I actually have a really good diet. <laughs> so I would always giggle and then I would get hurt feelings, but then I would giggle again because it's like, why am I getting hurt feelings for? I know what they say they're saying isn't true. It's just they're projecting their own insecurities onto me based on what they think I look like or do in my personal time. So it's really stupid. <laughs> but if it happens to me and I share about it, maybe it'll make uh, some people that are watching this video feel a little bit better knowing that it's not just them. You know, they aren't alone in these uh, bullying struggles. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I was really proud of the whole uh, WWE tryout experience because literally a couple weeks beforehand, I just found out that I have like a major life altering, you know, disease. I have restrictive lung disease. And um, when I was diagnosed with scoliosis as a kid, I was actually one of those like nerdy kids that had to wear a back brace, believe it or not. <laughs> not like not like in public, thankfully. I don't even know, honestly. I'll be quite honest with you guys. I don't even know if I could even handle the struggle of having to wear one of those in public. I was very unlucky, but lucky at the same time. So I'm sure I'll be lucky and unlucky again. But <clears throat> my back brace kind of made me do like one of these things because my shoulders are uneven because of my scoliosis. <clears throat> and one side of my rib cage is actually um, not the same um, extension as the other, which, you know, kind of makes sense now that I know I have restrictive lung disease. <clears throat> But I remember the doctors were super cool. It's like when you break a bone and they give you a cast and they say you can pick a color. It was kind of the same thing. So they take like this mold of, you know, your abdomen area, your rib cage and stuff. <laughs> and they shape it to what it needs to be. And then they said I could pick a color. So I remember my back brace was purple. And I remember my mom being like, purple, really? I thought you would have picked black because, you know, black for a very long time. And it still to this day is one of my all time favorite colors. But I picked purple. <laughs> which is obviously one of the first colors I was talking about in my previous video where I was like, yeah, my first set of like real wrestling gear, which was so ugly, was black, white, and purple. <laughs> so yes, I was one of those nerdy kids that had a back brace and it kind of made me do this and it was so uncomfortable. I only had to wear it to sleep and then wake up the next day and then I was able to take it off. And I had to wear that for almost two years and it was so embarrassing that like, um, I would purposely forget it at home if I had a sleepover to go to because I just, you know, didn't want to deal with that kind of drama. Um, <clears throat> it was so uncomfortable. I had like this like Velcro type strap that uh, several, I think two or three, I don't remember exactly. And like it would like squeeze your ribs so tight. It would make it so hard to breathe. And you're just like walking around like this with it on and oh, disaster. <clears throat> so fast forward several years later. I'm at WWE, I have restrictive lung disease, and I'm trying to do a three-day rigorous tryout and pass the test and do all this stuff so I can have my childhood dream job. <clears throat> And I remember being so proud because we had an uneven amount of girls. So I actually did a couple of the drills uh, more than once. I did them twice. I remember I did... Um, one of the drills twice with Jessica Havoc, actually. And um, I just remember being very positive throughout that whole uh, tryout experience. And I met a lot of very amazing people. <laughs> it was an experience I'll never forget, but I, I won't forget it for quite a few reasons. And I will talk about those uh, later on in another video as we continue on about my wrestling, ex my pro wrestling experience and my life and, <clears throat> and everything like that. But um, yeah, I was super proud that I was able to do several of those drills twice. One of them I was totally terrible at. Thank goodness I only had to do it once. Oh my gosh, I looked like such an idiot. <laughs> like never in my whole entire wrestling career of training did I ever have to do one of those drills. Like I was not prepared. <laughs> Um, anyway, <clears throat> and I remember I did every single push up properly with proper form. I never went down to my knees or anything. And I was just like, yeah, and I did every single squat. And then of course, like I had this like huge, like inhaler with like this little tube, this clear tube thing attached to it that attached and the inhaler went into it like this. And then, so it's like this device that's in like the shape of an L like this. And then this part bends down this way and goes into your mouth like, and it like makes this really loud 
sound and that's what it looks like. I still have it to this day. Actually, I still have to use it every day. <clears throat> but yeah, <laughs> long story short, that's why I'm always coughing. And I kind of had to um, like slow down my wrestling style quite a bit. And like my nose always itches and things because, you know, there's just a lot of stuff going on. But I always wanted to be that person that's like, I am not going to stay a victim of my circumstances and my circumstances don't <laughs> define me. You know, I don't want to be another statistic. And I've always really felt that way after I took that statistics class in high school. I was like, man, I don't want to be like one of these numbers that kids, you know, generations from now are going to be learning about. I don't I don't want to be that. I want to be my own story. I don't want to be just another statistic in some book or some class or whatever. I want to be the exception to the rule. I don't want to be the one that fits into the rule. <laughs> and so that's kind of how I approached this. I was like, you know what? I have lung disease. I have all these health issues. I have uh, two degenerative joint and ligament issues that I inherited. And I've kind of just tried to work with them and then uh, work within the confines of having them and try to slowly overcome them without ever leaving the public eye. Um, and so that's why I had to change a lot of my wrestling style. And it kind of made me feel lost in the independence for a while. <laughs> Especially where everybody's doing like, you know, 27 different drop kicks and whoop, boom and all these other like crazy death defying moves. And I'm sitting here like, you know, Tennessee stomp style, <laughs> like, uh, uh, like getting the most out of every little possible thing that my character would do because my character would do this, 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 this. So <clears throat> bullying never fully stops, guys. It The only thing that you can necessarily control is how you respond to it. And, and be that type of person that if someone starts talking uh, badly about someone else, be the person that puts a stop to it. Even if you don't like the person that they're talking about and deep down you're like, oh, I really want to get in that conversation. Just be the better person, be the bigger person and be the person that puts a stop to it. Um, we need more people like that. And, you know, if you don't have anything to hide, do what I'm doing right now and just live life unfiltered because you'll find that there is such a freedom to that. And I'm spending a lot of time <clears throat> talking about this stuff, but I feel it's so important. And I feel so many other people come off so preachy about these types of things. And I just want to share with, with everybody, like what worked for me and what didn't, you know, because all those positive quotes that you see on social media, they're great and all, but if you're not actually living by them, they're more hurtful than helpful because the people themselves that are also putting those out there probably aren't living by them at either. And they're just doing that for attention or this facade that they're putting out there. And facades are sometimes more hurtful and more harmful than actually just putting your real self out there. And we live in a society that is, is just so fake. We have people doing fake reviews, people posting about their fake awesome lives, but they don't realize the different perspectives, perspectives that are out there. You know, like for example, <laughs> someone could be, you know, posting with like, Ten million dollars in their hand, or you know, five thousand. Say it's like five thousand dollars in their hand. Oh, it's a great Friday night, right? But with the real perspective, my, they were trying to project maybe that they're so rich and they just made all this money and it's, their life is awesome. But in reality, they could be doing this thing where they just emptied out their entire bank account just for the sake of taking that photo, and then they're just going to put it back in. You know, so you really got to just <clears throat> be real. Put your real self out there, and just you know, if you're being disrespected by your environment change your environment. We, we approach our dreams and we approach our lives as if we're like ancient, like several hundred year old trees with these feet upon feet upon feet of roots in the ground and stuck there. We aren't those trees. We aren't stuck. You can get up and go anytime you want to. You just have to get the, the, the love for yourself, the guts and the gumption to actually do it and see it through. And uh, the reason why I'm saying those things is because that took me my entire life to learn. And once I did that, and once I committed myself to that, I have never felt such a freedom, guys. Never in my entire life, from the time I was born to right now, this is the most free, the most freeing, the most happy, and just the most, like, me I have ever been. The most lost I've ever been is when I had one of the worst environments of my career and I was trying so hard to be something I wasn't to fit in, to survive, to make it. But really, it was like I was just a bomb in a birdcage, you know, and I didn't like that. I, it wasn't me. It wasn't who I am. So what did I do? I got up. I changed my environment, changed my circle, got myself out of that birdcage, and I don't feel like a bomb anymore. I don't feel like I'm in a cage. I don't. I just feel so free, like I'm living my best life. And that sounds so corny. But I, I truly believe that. 
And I really want to see more people have that. So this worked for me. It may not work for you, but if it worked for me, then it must work for at least one other person. I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm not the be all end all of positivity, but this worked for me. I hope it'll work for at least one other person in the world.